Hi there, my name is Ronnie, and together with my cat Eve, I replaced my six-year-old gaming PC over the last two and a half months with this thing of beauty. And during that process, I recorded a lot of it. Um, it's mostly for fun, I like making videos, but I also thought it would be fun to look back on later myself, and then maybe I could also help anyone else out there on the internet that's trying to do something similar. Um, I did a lot of research here, and anyone that's doing similar will know that this particular case and this configuration with that distribution plate is pretty popular, um, but there are some intricacies with it that involve choice, and some things that were ultimately just trial and error for me that I wasn't able to figure out from my research, um, and those are the things that I would, I would like to focus on, not necessarily in this video. This one's going to be just more of an overview of the entire system as well as some pretty pictures, but I think I'll do some follow-up videos with the, the details of the parts that I thought were not totally clear. Um, things like the space available for the fittings near the bottom radiator on the bottom there below the graphics card, the exact fittings that I used, how I got all my lighting to work with Corsair IQ, um, that kind of thing. I was actually new to the overall custom water cooling process uh, and research, build, waiting for parts, everything included. I think there were at least a few hundred hours put into this build, so it's been quite a project. So I'll throw the full specs into the description, but for the record, the primary components here are a Leon Lee O11D XL case, an overclocked AMD 5900X 12 core CPU, and the giant mouthful that is the EVGA RTX 3080 Ti FTW3 Ultra Gaming 12 gigabyte graphics card. These are backed up by an Asus Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard, uh, a whole ton of EKWB custom water cooling components, uh, and then some Corsair components, 32 gigabyte, 3600 megahertz RAM, 1200 watt power supply, and 10 QL120 fans. Uh, those of you trying to build a PC in the last couple years will know that the GPU was far and away the most difficult and most expensive component to get. Um, this particular EVGA card has a boost clock up to 1800 megahertz, and is on par with most RTX 3090 implementations for gaming. Um, to be honest, this EVGA version of the 3080 Ti is a bit overkill for me, but I couldn't help myself with the choice that I had. Um, even the Founders 3080 Ti is overkill, but I didn't have the option of, of getting a regular 3080. It wasn't available to purchase. Um, what you're probably wondering is how I even got anything. Uh, no, I did not pay a scalper 200% retail price. I subscribed to all the discords, and alerts and whatnot until I saw that my local Best Buy was going to have physical stock coming in the next morning. Um, so I left work at the end of the day, I went home, I grabbed a sleeping bag and a bunch of food, and I slept in line on the sidewalk by the loading dock under a street lamp with about 300 other people. I was about the 80th person in line, and when they got to me, my choices were a Founders 3080 Ti or this EVGA 3080 Ti. Uh, I bought the latter at retail price on the morning of October 1st, 2021. Um, and from then on, I was free to really design the rest of the system.
I would not recommend that you go ahead and actually buy any components or even do a lot of planning until you have your GPU secured because in this market that's what's most important um, and the hardest thing to get. But assuming that you do figure that out, um, my first starting point afterwards was w deciding what is most important to me. Um, and my answer to that was big, beautiful windows in the case so that I can see into all of the RGB goodness. So my next step was figure out the case. Uh, and I stumbled across the Leon Lee case. Uh, it's absolutely great. I like to run a Plex server, for example. So it's got four hot swappable drive bays in the back. That's great. Tempered glass window on the front and the side. Can't do better than just the whole thing as a sheet of glass. Um, that was honestly great for me. And then I saw the distribution plate for the front that many people had used from EKWB. Again, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I was super happy when I saw those two things and how they work together. And honestly, from then on, a lot of the other choices pretty much logically followed. Um, I can't believe that I'm condensing what was probably 100 hours of research from that point um, into one sentence. But to be honest, a lot of the other types of components in a PC build are pretty much standard sizes. Um, you can look at them individually, you can decide how much RAM you want, you can decide how many cores your CPU needs to have, etc. But spacing is not really a concern with those things. They're going to fit. You just have to decide how much money you want to spend. Um, and for me, how much money I'm willing to spend on things whose only point is to have RGB goodness added. Um, a lot of that went into this build because I want it to be art in my living room. Um, but that being said, um, a lot of those other components are pretty much space independent. The stuff that we had to worry about, that I had to worry about was the case, whether the graphics card fits, and then all those water cooling components. That's where I need to spend a lot of my time. So my old computer was exclusively black and red. The case itself was black and red. The LEDs did not change color. They were locked in red. And for this build, I didn't want to be locked into any particular color. So everything is black and clear, effectively. Uh, and the RGB LEDs speak for themselves. Um, for anyone curious, each QL120 fan has 34 LEDs in it. Um, the case, motherboard, RAM, extra LED strips, and the major three EK water cooling components all also have their own. Um, the total for the build is about 475 individually addressable RGB LEDs. The coolant choice was one of the hardest, um, and I did consider the EK Mystic Fog that is supposed to let the LED colors kind of bounce around in it but the videos I saw online weren't really convincing me and I was afraid that if it didn't look great, it might end up looking like skim milk. Uh, so using clear, I can still see through the distribution plate like a window on the front, which is pretty sweet. Um, and I also don't have to worry about any kind of colored coolant getting stuck in my system over time needing to be cleared out. Um, you are supposed to change the coolant every, I think, six to 12 months or so. Um, and maybe when I do that swap in the future, I'll end up considering changing the color. Thanks for watching. As I said, 
My plan is to do at least another video or two on some of the nitty gritty that went into this build. If you happen to see this video and you have a question, feel free to let me know. Stop being a cat for two minutes.